I don't know if you're aware, Australia is one of the world's largest fossil fuel exporters. We're also the world's fourth largest carbon offset developer. Australia issues around 20 million carbon offsets a year. In By just after 2030, we will be the world's largest carbon offset developer, uh, 45 million offsets a year. Land-based carbon offsetting is Australia's only climate policy. None of them are real, but they work. they're easy to move around in an Excel spreadsheet. You've been talking about the multifaceted problems with carbon offsets for years, and it's not entirely unrelated to, your, to what you were just saying. Why are, are offsets not dead yet? Offsets aren't dead because capital does very nicely out of offsets. It creates a problem and then it sells you the solution. <laughs> um, and, and it, you know, you create a new market. I mean, not, you know, it's not that capital created. Government created the market, as always. You know, this thing called the market, this supposedly free market, is absolutely a political construct. And, and it's, it's also a, a scientific construct. It's a construct in that it doesn't have a scientific basis, but it's discussed as if it does. So what we can say about offsets is that producing carbon pollution through burning fossil fuels or through livestock, those are the two pr primary sources, or through several other of the activities that, that, that we do, is a dead cert. When you burn a ton of oil, you produce a certain amount of carbon dioxide. When you burn a ton of coal, you produce a certain amount of carbon dioxide. When you graze a herd of cattle, you produce a certain amount of methane and nitrous oxide. Uh, those are absolute certainties. That is solid science. A leads to B. It's very, very simple. Carbon offsets are completely, at best, completely uncertain. There's two fundamental and obvious problems with that. Number one, what we do today is far more important than what happens tomorrow. You know, we, we're, we're in an emergency. And if you don't deal with the emergency right now, then it becomes too late very quickly. And even if you get everything right in 20, 30, 40 years, um, we could already have passed key planetary tipping points. So offsetting into the future is not exchanging like for like. It's exchanging a certainty of destruction against a possibility of salvation which may not come to pass in time. Number two, so many of these offsets fall apart. Um, even as they're issued, at the moment you look at them hard, you say, that's not going to fly. So, for instance, you know what seemed to be the most obvious and easy offset of all, which was forest conservation or reforestation, and you think that is surely the the the, the set of offsets which is um, easiest to document, uh, easiest to show additionality, uh, easiest um, to to show continuity. It turns out that a huge tranche of those offsets are basically fraudulent that uh, they simply don't do what they claim to do, uh, that uh, if there is carbon sequestration, in many cases it's already been reversed, uh, that in many cases they're selling what was already happening as if it were new and, and additional to what would have happened in, in that um, utterly theoretical, conjectural future of, of this might this might stay the same, this might not stay the same. I mean, you know, what, what you're selling is always very hard to pin down. Um, and in many cases, you, you know, it's just not there at all. The, the offset gets sold, people make themselves rich in, in doing so, but nothing actually happens to retire any greenhouse gases. And that's the best case. It's total fraud from the very outset. But the carbon emissions from these polluting industries which are buying the offsets, those are real. 